All right, here's the deal. BF5 went free to play on PlayStation for a month or something. I'm not sure. I, I play on Xbox, which by the way means my games are still like super try hard and sweaty. While PlayStation players are apparently farming noobs. Yes, I'm bitter about it. But because of that, I keep being asked on stream about what guns I recommend for new players in order to at least compete a little bit against all the experienced players farming them. So I've made this video. There are no huge patches coming to BF5 anymore, so basically, some guns are still overpowered, some are still easy to use or whatever, and that is likely never going to change. Now I'm going to do a full explanation for the criteria I use to pick out the selections coming up, but I have timestamped in the description different classes for those of you with a short attention span if you want to skip to that. However, if any selections seem weird to you, experienced players, when you skip this explanation coming up, well then you probably should have watched the explanation, so don't flame me in the comments or I'm going to call you a moron. Deal? Good. So the selection criteria. These are not necessarily the best guns in the game. Easy guns aren't always the best ones. Sometimes the best guns are skill cannons, etc. That's not this video. If you want that, I made that video according to my opinion, and I'll link to it in the description, although some guns are in both videos. I have also tried to select at least two different options for each class with different reasons for being quote unquote easy to use. I've also tried to steer clear of purely guns that take a while to unlock or you have to purchase with company coins for the new players that won't have an abundance of time or coins whatever so I've kind of mixed it up a bit so that everyone can find something I have included a fair few that require that stuff because it just simply didn't make sense not to mention them but yeah at least you'll have some things you can aim for buying or grinding to unlock also, I get loads of people telling me they can't get some guns in the game because I think some of them you had to either unlock via the game's live service or you need to now purchase the deluxe edition or something. Someone let me know in the comments. Again, I've included options that are in the base game and unlocked early on so you have something to use either way. Finally, please do not treat these guns as all you should use. Some of them aren't even guns I like or think are high up in the meta. They're just easy to use in certain ways for newer players. View them as fallbacks or guns to run to ease yourself in. The best way moving forward is to use all of the guns that you can, challenge yourself, improve as a player, and find what works specifically for you. Okay? Thanks for your patience. Let's do this. Some of the gameplay in this video may have been recorded in front of a live audience, so if you enjoy it, you can catch me streaming here on YouTube by subscribing and maybe turning on notifications. I look forward to seeing you on the streams. Kicking off with Assault, we have the Sturmgewehr 1-5. Now, I want to be quite brief with all of these guns are not super in-depth. I'm going to structure this as what makes it easy to use, which situations benefit the gun, and then what drawbacks come with this weapon selection. So the Sturmgewehr 1-5 is made easy by having basically no mechanics to learn. You run around with it and shoot people in full auto fire mode. It's focused on close to close-ish mid-range play generally, but can be used for mid to longer mid-range. If you have solid recoil control and accuracy, probably more so on PC than console, and you can try turning on ADS field of view in the settings for a more stable experience if you wish. I don't use that currently, but regardless, the key reason I've selected this gun is that it's available at the very start of the game. It feels like what you will have experienced from many basic FPS game assault rifles or possibly SMGs in the past, making it overall familiar, simple, and readily available. It excels in situations that many newer players have more of a chance in, those being closer range engagements due to less aiming skill requirements, just run around and blast people. Also, having more gunfights is a great way to improve early on. You will therefore be held back in the versatility department and indeed range dominance. The semi-auto rifles easily beat you at range and something like the STG-44 is my much preferred option for versatile play, even if I made a mistake in my best BF5 guns video for early 2021 and claim the STG-44 kills faster than the Sturmgewehr at all ranges. It in fact doesn't. It's kind of the other way around, but just by a little bit, but the STG-44 is more versatile and reliable at longer ranges. Either way, whatever, you hopefully see my points. 
Then also for assault, we have a semi-auto rifle, the M1941 Johnson, which many of you will need to purchase with company coins. Semi-auto rifles in this game are borderline broken levels of dominant. They do so much of what the support and recon class should do, whilst being extremely versatile and lethal. They're basically all good, to be honest, but for sheer ease of use, the Johnson takes the top spot because it's absolutely ridiculously stable. You barely have to control recoil or pace your shots, especially as it fires fairly slowly for a semi-auto, so it has time to reset the sights between each shot anyway. I don't even really like this gun. I made a video about how it was a letdown or pointless for optimal play due to its slow time to kill, but the one thing it is good for is exactly what this list is about. If you're struggling to hit the target, if you're new, whatever, this is as simple as it gets. And some people do really like it either way, whether they be new or experienced. You know, opinions are opinions, including mine. You just put your crosshair on the target and plink away. It may not kill quickly, but it is reliable. This is especially apparent at mid-range, where you won't be so heavily punished for the slow time to kill, such as at close range, and you can use it at long range, but beware of being one or two shot killed by a bolt action or self-loading rifle. Regardless, this is such an easy to use weapon that there's no way it couldn't be included in this video, but once you have the hang of it, I'd recommend finding something with a bit more potency. Then we come to the medic class, and I'm opening with the Sten for three reasons. Firstly, it's available at the start of the game. Secondly, I've used it extensively. And thirdly, it's up there around the top for the most stable SMG experience you can have whilst remaining accurate. My favorite SMG, the well gun, can actually be more stable, but it's less innately accurate in terms of the shots going exactly where you're aiming, and it needs to be purchased via company coins, which I'm trying to avoid at least a little bit. So the Sten just meshes all of the ease of use factors together and is available at the start of the game. Recoil is minor and you can use it at almost any kind of standard SMG range. It's just simple. It fits perfectly for this list and can still be pretty rewarding, hence why I've used it a lot even after my initial learning phase. Then we come to the Type 2A for the Medic class, which many of you will need to purchase with company coins. This one was obvious, there was simply no chance it wouldn't be in this video and indeed featured on the thumbnail. It's not as overpowered as many think it is, but I do believe it's a bit overtuned and invalidate some other guns in their optimal range. Basically, you're going to be limited to pretty close range, but you have a very fast fire rate with a pretty large magazine, so it's essentially the epitome of a spray and pray weapon. Good aim does help a lot, obviously, but certainly it's not mandatory. So for purely close range situations, you have a solid chance against most other guns regardless of who the user is. Just run around and shred people, with lots of rounds there if you're missing your shots. Personally, I I recommend using specializations for a larger magazine rather than a faster rate of fire because the standard rate of fire of 1028 rounds per minute is just more than enough. Now obviously you'll be easily beaten at long and usually mid range with this gun. It's not for versatile play. It isn't good for a lot of the areas on a lot of the maps whilst playing the larger team modes but it sure is easy to use at its optimal range and requires little skill to pick up a few kills when you happen to just bump into the enemy. It basically levels out the skill difference at close range, which is a bit of a problem, but as stated at the start of the video, none of this looks likely to change now. And so on to the support class, and I generally don't recommend the support class at all for optimal play to be honest. I really don't like how this game balanced the classes where support is concerned, even though I can use it. So these two picks might seem kind of weird, but I do have reasons. However, let me state that I usually recommend the Lewis gun for all round versatile play for those with a decent level of ability. But for this ease of use video, I'm opening with the Type 11 LMG, which many of you do need to purchase with company coins. This gets my nod for ease of use due to just solid stability, great accuracy, and the ability to run around with it if you wish. I don't like the gun that much personally, and I don't really use it, but in a class that I think is underpowered, at least this thing is pretty simple to use, and therefore you can get some kills here and there if you aren't all that able a player yet. The downsides being that it's basically outgunned by many things at many ranges, and it's not as movement friendly or peaking friendly as the semi-auto rifles of the assault class, but that's basically true of the support class in general. It's just better to use other things, I'm not gonna lie to you. Mainly semi-auto rifles, which are again just simply stronger than most guns at the average engagement distance you'll find yourself in on these maps. Either way, the Type 11 LMG is pretty easy to use. So then we come to the next support option, and it's the MG34, purely because it's an MMG and available at support.
support rank one. I think there are better MMGs out there if you want to go and grind for them or unlock them, but whatever. Just treat this as me talk about MMGs in general. They're all pretty easy to use. You lie down and you shoot people. I couldn't not mention that in an ease of use video, but I totally don't recommend this playstyle overall for most players, and therefore I don't like or use MMGs. This is the one I least recommend in this video, because you'll learn way more, way more quickly by using a gun that you don't just lie down with, as easy as that is, and on the flip side, it's actually really, really hard to use these for an optimal movement-based style. So it's mega easy to get some kills by camping, but you're also limited by the requirement to be bipodded and usually play a passive playstyle. Take it or leave it, it's up to you. Remove any bias that I have, but I needed to include an MMG in a video about making the game easy to get a few kills, so there you go. And onto the recon class we go now. I actually have three very different options for this class. We'll start with the ZH-29, which is unlocked at recon rank 10. I didn't intend to include this gun at all because it does actually rely upon some ability to hit your shots, which some new players can't guarantee, at least not yet, because if you're missing your shots, this gun will truly suck for you. But I knew if I didn't include this gun, some people would go absolutely mental. And if you can hit your shots, it's truly lethal. Two shot kills to center mass in most situations, likely somewhat easier to utilize on PC due to using a mouse to aim, but still extremely vital on console if you have solid accuracy, and I play on console by the way, you can use it at any range as long as you can reliably hit shots at a high success rate, but it's really designed for mid to long range. So to make it simple, you'll kill most people if you hit your shots at an optimal fire rate, and you'll lose against most people if you miss shots regularly. It really is that simplistic. And you only have a few rounds per reload, so you're double punished for regular misses. This is genuinely a user ability based gun, but it sure is easy to get kills if you can aim well. Next for recon we have the Trench Carbine, which most of you will need to purchase with company coins. The key to this gun is unlocking and utilizing the specialization that makes the gun a full auto weapon. No, you don't have that to begin with. But when you do have that, this becomes a very easy to use recon gun because you can just run around up close and basically use it as a standard full auto weapon. Kind of similar-ish to a slower firing SMG. So just fire up a spotting flare, then run in and clear out the enemies. No real mechanics to learn or huge difficulty for picking up simple close range kills. Now the obvious downsides are that at range the gun isn't very good so you're a bit limited, plus competent SMG players or some assault rifle users and shotgun users will have the advantage at close range, so you're looking to catch people unaware and spray them down, which the spotting flare makes a whole lot easier. And our gun to close out the recon class is the boys AT rifle, a gun hated by many and one that I simply just don't use, but it is a gun that picks up easy kills if you're a stationary or at least passive player. This is an anti-material rifle, so it hits really hard, whereas you need to hit a headshot on a full health enemy with a bolt action rifle in this game in order to get a one shot kill. With the boys AT rifle, you can pick up one shot kills to center mass out to 100 meters. The drawback being that you can only aim down sight whilst the gun is bipodded, so no, this is not a versatile gun nor a gun for aggressive play, but that's not what this video is again. This gun will pick up easy kills. I don't like it, but it's there. Don't hate the player, hate the game, right? So if you want to give it a shot, I hope you have fun. Be aware that you'll get smashed a lot if you get caught out up close or moving around in the open. But if you can post up somewhere and survey the area, you just simply need to land your shots and that's all. And with that, that's my full presentation for some easy guns for new players to try out. Once again, please don't simply use what's easy. I've even said a few times in this video that I don't even use some of these guns. Using just these is not how you're going to get good at the game, but they're a nice fallback if you need them. So now, let me know what you think about anything BF5 related or this video in the comments below, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, subscribe for more content, especially for when Battlefield 6 comes out, as I promise I'll work super hard to entertain you, inform you, and make you better. Also, hit the like button to let me know if I did a good job or a dislike if not, and all the links to my Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Instagram, all that are in the description. Also, here's the board of awesome featuring the epic people that do support the channel on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes, thank you so very much. Plus, big thank you to the channel members who get exclusive channel perks from hitting the join button below. And with that all said, I'm Get Good Guy, and I'll see you next time, laters.
Then as well as this, it was kind of buggy, uh, it had a poor loot management system, and generally wasn't supported by DICE after Criterion handed it over. Basically, if you don't properly support something, it can't possibly succeed. Criterion did a great job with Firestorm, DICE did not. 